Antarctica, a location with vast landscapes, stirring seas, and unique wildlife. The epic tranquility and untouched purity of this region of the Earth is as close to peering back in time as you can get. Exploring this pristine ecosystem is a reminder of the history and the frailty of our great planet. As photographers, we have the opportunity to capture moments, moments that tell the story of our journey and allow us to share them with the rest of the world. Hopefully, our stories and our images will showcase the beauty and serve as a reminder to others how incredible our planet is. This is Antarctica, the seventh continent. Good morning from Antarctica. Uh, for many people, Michael included, this is their first landing on the Antarctic continent. And this morning we made our landing uh, in Antarctica Bay at a place called Brown's Bluff. And we're gonna wander around between the ice and these beautiful penguins and try to capture their spirit. It's amazing when they come this close to you. These guys will come up and visit you. You got little ones jumping and playing in the water. One of the shots that I'm establishing here is an establishing shot. So as I look out here, I've got penguins on the shore. I've got a couple of rock ledges and uh, rocks and then an iceberg out there and then the horizon. And it kind of is defining what uh, Brown's Bluff is all about. This guy wants his picture taken. He's a very friendly guy. There we go, buddy. Oh yeah. Work it. <laughs> I love it. One of the other things that I love about bringing people down here is not just to teach them photography, but to see Antarctica through their fresh eyes. You know, I've done this so many times. It's still amazing, but it's not as amazing as the first time I came down here. And so you kind of live vicariously through the eyes of the people that have seen it for the first time. The expanse, the size, the sheer uh, normity of Antarctica is what takes people's breath away. We were just slowly moving through this channel. It was so beautiful. And we're looking at lots and lots of humpback whales. And I thought, you know, it'd be the exact same whether we were here or not. And most of the time, this, this enormous expanse, at any one time, there's so few humans. I don't know, that was a, a moment for me that I felt like this place is just beyond belief. I was expecting to be wowed by the big things like the humpback whales, but we saw the tiniest bird in Antarctica today, the little storm petrels, entertaining little birds. And I think I got a lot out of that. And of course the ice, you know, just one more obsession you didn't need, ice.
when you ask me about my favorite experience moment, that's really difficult because the whole thing has been so wonderful and it's been changing. We've seen different kinds of things. The weather has been different. We had a little bit of snow this morning and yesterday was mostly sunshine and then we had fog. So we've been through the whole gamut of weather and the ocean has been rough, it's been flat, it's been a mirror. What can I say? It's just been overwhelming. When you're focused on your shooting and your camera, you end up in a zone and a world of your own. And it, it's particularly nice to do that when the, I find when the weather is not so good, there's fog, there's mist. It brings you a little bit more back to the days of the early explorers, what they were dealing with. The scale of things, looking at what seems like a relatively big ship silhouetted against a huge mountain uh, really makes you feel kind of small and insignificant in this continent. One of the aspects I've really enjoyed with this have been the Zodiac trips we've had, where you get in the boats with some experts and we zip around in a bay area and it gives us a chance to really be up close and personal with some of the icebergs, the ice formations, some of the wildlife, the shore areas, but it gets you into places you wanna get and it gets you a closer exposure. Plus the willingness of the staff, either from the captain and moving the whole boat to the people running the Zodiacs, getting you where you wanna go, where it's safe, really brought it to you and made it a little bit more personal. It's sunset and um, we're in the middle of a whale lunging. These are humpback whales lunging. They come up for food and uh, they stick their uh, booleans in their, their mouths. They bring up the food from the deep and then they uh, all eat it together and circle around and they dive down and we get whale tail and we've been chasing these guys for nearly an hour now. And it's just beautiful sunset light and um, they're kind of basically circling the ship. It's um, been an incredible day of wildlife, from minke whales to humpback whales to Weddell seals to just penguins galore. The days come at you fast down here in Antarctica, and today was one of those days where they just kept coming and coming. Uh, it's been a magnificent day, and uh, you go to bed tonight, and you're going to lie down, and you're going to think about it and play it back in your head a whole bunch of times. And luckily, we have a lot of photography that we've done that uh, is going to keep us very busy when we get home. One thing that made this unique is both the presence of Kevin and Art Wolf. It's so obvious with him, his breadth of knowledge, not in terms of execution of shots, but his feeling for what makes shots good. I'm motivated uh, by a lot of things when I take a picture, but probably the primary one is to inspire, to inform, to educate people. You can learn composition and yeah. aesthetics and the rest of your life you'll be and, learning as I right. I love traveling with Kevin. You know, he is almost like a child in a way. He's so exuberant. And it's genuine, and that's what's really nice. Today is just a freaking marvelous day. Like right now, I got this iceberg coming up with a mountain behind it. Go to zoom land, it's, it gives okay. me my typical foreground, and boom, boom. Teaching and taking pictures isn't a job for us, it's a passion. Next week, I'll be back in the office, I can't believe it. But right now, I'm in my happy place. I love the way the oblique light at sunset highlights the edges of tabular icebergs. And the moment you're focused on that, you know, there's a humpback whale that intrudes into your picture. I love that spontaneity. No, but as we're interviewing, I'm seeing platoons of uh, penguins jumping. You can see them out there. It's pretty cool to see.
See them? Oh, yeah. yeah. And some came close to the ship, but I didn't miss a beat. I didn't get distracted. <laughs> One of the most challenging shots that I took was of porpoising penguins. Um, and they were Gen 2 penguins and they were really unpredictable about where they would come up and they'd be out of the water only for a split second. So out of, I don't know, probably a couple hundred frames, I had two or three that I thought were worth working on and I got two that I was really happy with. One thing I did that I really enjoyed was to go up on the bridge. I was surprised how nice, how accessible the bridge was. And at one time I actually went up there at night and was able to take a image of the first officer lit entirely by the light of the, of the instrumentation. And his willingness to help me out was really a lot of fun. So it was sort of a different image than many people have gotten here but just something I wanted to try, and they were very open to allowing me to do that. Oh, here. yes, and, and that was my Henry. <laughs> Correct. Uh, we can also see glaciers in these charts. We'll see um, zodiacs, and we we'll get to you uh, with an announcement in regards to the simulation. Smile, smile. <laughs> a couple nights ago, we saw a very large iceberg in a very broad channel. And it was the only place for chin straps to haul themselves out of the water. And it was populated with hundreds of penguins. And that was unique for me. This late season travel, we're at the third week in February now, and a lot of the penguins have left the rookeries and now they're in these channels of clear water, you know, hunting food. And those icebergs then become their new rookery. Why I like Antarctica, okay, and as a photographer, you can photograph a lot of things that nobody else will be, ever be able to photograph because icebergs and snow melt and a lot of those things, it changes. It's a dynamic landscape. It does something to me. And actually, it's so important to me that I told my wife at one time, after several years of dating, I said, you know, if you can get yourself a passport, I'll ask you to marry me and take you to Antarctica and we'll get married down there. Two and a half months later, she gives me an envelope with a passport in it. So I had to start thinking about how I was gonna propose. But we got married down here five years ago. We visited the place where I got married on this trip, Nico Harbor, which holds a, a dear and special place in my heart. Maybe that's another reason why. You know, the fact that the person I love most I could bring down here to show her the place that I love the most. And I think any one of you that have come on a trip to Antarctica will agree. And those that haven't, you need to do it so that you can feel the specialness here and the uniqueness here and the fact that next week when you're home and you're back at your desk, you can stop for a second, close your eyes and remember where you were and go back to that happy place. Life is not measured by the number of breaths you take, but by the moments that take your breath away. And I hope you guys all have not only one moment but several moments that you will just take and it's like for me the antarctic it grabs your soul in your heart and you always have this calling to come back so uh, i hope you've enjoyed it Radio.